Okay, here I'm going to do part B of our Bayes' theorem example. And so again, the, the example, we had three different bowls. We had red and blue coins in each one. Uh, part A, we figured out the probability of actually drawing a red coin. Part B, we're going to assume that a red coin was drawn. We want to find the probability that it came from bowl one. So that is going to be the part of the problem that I'm going to do in this example. And I'm actually going to revert back to my little tree diagram that we, that we constructed in part one because I think, you'll, well, you'll see that we can simply use those values to calculate um, the second, to calculate the, the solution to part B. Okay, so the way I'm going to label this is, again, what we're trying to figure out is we're, we're given the information that a red coin was drawn. So we're given the information that a red coin was drawn. We're trying to figure out the probability that it came from B1. So that would be the, the notation that we would use. So what's the probability that we had selected bowl 1 given that a red coin was drawn? So now I'm going to use our formula here. It says to calculate this, it says the probability that B1 was selected, bowl one was selected given that we, that we picked a red coin. That's going to be the probability, okay, so it's going to be the probability that, um, well, let's, let me write the notation down. So it's going to be the probability that a red coin was selected given that bowl one was selected multiplied by the probability that bowl one was selected. And we divide that by the probability of getting a red coin, which we actually already figured out in part A, right? So again, we've actually already got all of these probabilities. So let me flip this around here. So we already figured out the probability of getting a red coin given that bowl one was selected. We said that that was 2 sixths. So given that bowl one is selected, the probability of getting a red coin was just Two, two sixths, and the probability of getting bowl one in the first place, we said that was simply one third. Now, the probability of getting a red coin, we figured that out in part A, but again, in terms of our tree diagram, the probability of getting a red coin, we just follow every branch out to where we stop at the event of getting a red coin, and we said we just multiply those probabilities together, so and then we add along the branches. So that's probably not the clearest way to say it. So we multiply, 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 and then we add up each one. So let me do that again. So in the denominator, again, the probability of getting a red coin, that's going to be one-third times two-sixths. So I'm just multiplying those the, 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 these two values together. And then we'll add, and next we'll just take one-sixth times one-third. And then last but not least, we'll take one-half times five-ninths. And you can check my arithmetic here. I'm not going to go through all of this one. I got this to equal two-eighths, or, well, certainly you can reduce it down to one-fourth. So if you get there after the coin has already been drawn and it was a red coin, notice how the probabilities, you know, sort of change here a little bit. Where'd my, I don't remember where my little original diagram went. It's now missing. But if you recall, the probability of selecting the first bowl, B1, at the very beginning, well, we've got it on our tree diagram here, the probability of selecting the first bowl was one-third. Okay. Well, after it's happened that a red coin was drawn, it actually turns out that the probability that the, the first bowl had been selected now drops to actually one-fourth. And to me, that sort of makes sense. You know, the, uh, if, if, you, if you look at the ratio, you know, the third bowl, for example, had the, the largest percentage of, of red coins. And it was also the most likely bowl to be selected. So intuitively to me, it seems like, you know, by virtue of the fact that we got a red coin, to me, it somehow it seems intuitively very likely that the third bowl was selected, or at least um, a, a little more 
you know, it seems like it seems like if somebody said, "Bet," you know, wh which bowl do you think it came from? Intuitively, to me, I would certainly say the third bowl. And you can actually compute these as well. The probability that the second bowl was selected, given that we found a red coin, that we drew a red coin, you can go through the same argument. I got this to be only one eighth. And the probability that the third bowl had been selected, given that we drew a red coin, that actually comes out to be five eighths. So, uh, if you if you had picked a red coin, there's an over fifty percent probability that it actually did come from the third bowl. So, again, I think these are super interesting problems. You're updating your probabilities based on based on new information. So. I'm going to do uh, a sort of a real life example here, something that uh, actually I think this, the statistics did come very much for real life. I think this is, this is not, um, I think that the data is real is what I'm trying to say. So it's going to be a problem dealing with Bayes' theorem and actually test results from the doctor, right? So, you know, as you get older, you get all, you have to start going in for tests and sometimes you can get what's called a false positive and we're going to talk about, you know, maybe if you do go in and take a test, say for, for a cancer screening, that's what my example is going to deal with. If you go in for this certain test and you test positive, what does that actually say? You know, should you, you know, obviously it goes without saying we would all get nervous, but the, I guess the real question is, how nervous should you be? So I think it's going to be super interesting, so take a look at it, and that one should be, I'll try to put a link in the videos or have it close by.